and my name is Becky, and this is a demo for Kiosk Manager. For Kiosk Manager, you would use this if you want to configure or customize single purpose devices. Typically, you would use these for kiosks, testing machines, digital signage, shared workspace machines, anything like that where you want to be able to control what is shown on your device and what the user is able to do. Before I get into setting up Kiosk Manager profiles, I want to show you where you can locate our Kiosk Manager documentation. That's going to be here at docs.recastsoftware.com. And then you can navigate to right click tools, features, kiosk management, and kiosk manager. This article is going to go over the same things I'm going to show in this video, but you also have this resource if you ever want to read it in an article. Okay, so to get started, you're going to right click on a device or a collection within Config Manager and navigate to your right-click tools and kiosk manager. The first thing I'm going to do is show you how to create a kiosk manager profile. And I want to note that when you're creating your profile, it doesn't matter which device or collection you're selecting, um, which device or collection that you're selecting, because you're not applying the profile yet. That only really matters when you're applying a profile or you're checking a profile status. But when you're creating the profiles, you can just go right into Manage Profiles, regardless of which de device or collection you've selected. So first, you'll get a list of all the profiles that have already been created. You get a few options up here. Plus sign is to create your new profile. X is to delete it. You can also copy a profile, import a profile, and export a profile. I'm going to go through and create a new profile so I'm going to click the plus sign you can see this populated down here and this is where you can name your kiosk manager profile whatever you want and click next these are all the configuration options you're going to have on your kiosk manager profile and you can select the ones that you want if you leave anything unselected you won't get that um, uh, window you won't get those options as you click Click through this wizard. So if there's anything you don't need, just leave it unchecked. Otherwise, you can check everything that you want. And for this demo, I'm going to check everything so I can show you all of your options for your profiles. First, we have automatic login. So basically, when your device starts up or restarts and it uh, needs a login, this allows you to enter in a um, username and a password that will automatically be used to log in so the user doesn't need to use their own credentials. So if you want to do that, you'll check this box for enable auto login, enter their domain, username and password that you want to be used, click test login to make sure it works. And you also have an option for advanced down here. So if you only want the login to be automatic with the credentials that you entered five times, just enter a five there and it will um, prompt the user for their own credentials after this has been done five times. Otherwise, keep that unchecked and this will continue for an unlimited amount of time. When you have that set up, click Next. And on this option, you have uh, Replace Shell. So when your machine starts up, this is where you will select what applications you want to be launched. At the top, you have a few options for Allow Sticky Keys, launch Windows Explorer, tile windows, and remove window borders. And then here in this dropdown, you have a few applications that you can select from. The first four are your major browsers. I'm gonna select Google Chrome. And when you have it selected in your dropdown, click plus, and it'll pop up in your list down here. When you click on it from your list, on the right-hand side will show the parameters to enter. You can see the, pro the uh, path to your browser is already in here populated for you. You can enter a launch URL, so what website you want to be opened when Google Chrome is launched. Kiosk Manager puts the browser in full screen mode. Private mode will delete the cache. You also have a delay in milliseconds, so if you want to wait um, some time for it to make sure that the network is connected. You may want to give it a delay before Google Chrome is launched. You have some window style options, normal, maximized, minimized, and hidden, and then also closed behavior. When, when Google Chrome is closed, what do you want to happen? Nothing. Relaunch the browser, restart, or, 
or shut down the computer. You have these same parameters for Internet Explorer, Mozilla Firefox, and Microsoft Edge. And then also you have Win32 application, so you can add that to your list. Here's where you will enter your path. You can also browse to it by clicking this box with three dots. You can also enter arguments. And then these three are just the same as we saw in the browser options for delay, window style, and close behavior. And then you also have UWP application. You can select that in your drop down, click the plus sign, and you get some additional parameters here, as well as a drop down list for your specific application that you want to choose. Once you have this set up the way that you want it, click Next. And now you have your restart on idle. So when your machine is idle after so many minutes, what do you want to happen? Do not restart on idle. Do you want it to restart on idle for the auto login user or restart on idle for all users? You also have the option to select how many minutes the device needs to be inactive before it will restart. It defaults to 30, but you can enter how many minutes you want. You have this set up, click Next, and now you're on your delete, delete files and folders on Restart. So here you get a drop down and you can select which folders you want to be deleted when the machine is restarted. For example, if you don't want any temp files to remain, you can select it in your drop down and click Add. You can do documents, you can do downloads or music, anything you want. You can also do custom. This is now a text box here and you can type out the path of the folder that you want to be deleted. And you can also browse to it again by clicking this box with the three dots. When you're ready, click next and now you're on your internet and URL allow list. To enable this, that means that your users will only be able to access the websites that you include here in your allow list. In your drop down, we do have a Pearson op option. So if that is something that your organization will be using on these kiosks, you can select that, click, click add, and you can see a handful of Pearson related websites are populated down here. We do also have an asterisk as a wildcard option. Or you can select custom, click add, and this is the text box here so you can add the website that you want your users to be able to access. Again, they will only be able to access the websites listed here. They won't be able to get to anything else. Click Next and now you have Disable Keyboard Keys. So from this drop down, you can select any keys on the keyboard you don't want your user to be able to use. We have Windows Menu as an op option. You can do Control Alt Delete. We have Numbers, Mute, some F keys. You can add anything that you want here and click Delete. Or excuse me, click Disable. Then you can go to Next. And the, your last option here is your audio configuration. This is how you want your volume to be as a default volume level. They will be able to change the volume level, but this is where it will be defaulted. So if you are doing some testing that requires listening to some recordings, you may want it a little bit higher. If this is a library, you may want it a little bit lower. This is where you can set your default volume, and you can also click Test Audio to see how it will sound. This is the last configuration option in Kiosk Manager Profile, so when you're all finished, click Finish. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you, I'm going to go back into my Kiosk Manager, and you have a few other options in this Kiosk Manager profile. First is Applied Profile Status. This is where you can check to see if there is a profile that has already been applied to that machine. I'm going to click into that. I don't have any currently set up in my environment, but I want to at least show you that you do have this option. So upload Applied Profile Status, and you can get some information from this box to see what profile is already on that machine. If you want to a apply a profile, go back to Kiosk Manager and there's Apply Profile. So this is going to give you a list of all of your Kiosk Manager profiles and you select the one that you want to apply. You click it, click Next, and you have two options. You can deploy immediately or you can schedule your deployment. So 
That way the profile won't be applied until whatever date and time you select. You also have a repeat interval option if you want it to be recurring. Um, an important thing to note here is for any scheduled actions, including recurring actions, you do need to have your proxy installed. And to have the proxy installed, you also need the recast management server. So if you don't have those installed yet, make sure you install your recast management server and also your proxy because you will need the proxy if you want to do any future actions. If you set that up here, you will also give it a task name for your task scheduler, and then you would click finish. If we go back into Kiosk Manager, another option we have is remove profiles. So if there are any profiles that are on that machine or that collection, this is where you would remove them. You can see remove immediately and schedule removal, schedule removal, which looks just like where we just were, where you can pick a start and end date, you can set a repeat interval. Again, you need a proxy if you are gonna schedule your removal. And then also back down in our kiosk manager, we have scheduled tasks and scheduled task results. Scheduled tasks will show any profiles that are scheduled to be deployed, and then your scheduled task results will show the results of any profiles that have been deployed. So you can see if they went to success or if they went to error, and you would get the results here in this window. That's it for Kiosk Manager. If you have any further questions, please feel free to go to our website at docs.recastsoftware.com for our documentation, or you can reach out to us at any time. You can contact us at recast software.com. I hope this has been helpful. Thank you so much for watching.